Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll be discussing the proper techniques for putting your winter clothing into storage so that you can step into spring with an uncrowded closet and your clothing will be well kept until you unpack it again in the fall. <laughs> While some men may not necessarily need to rotate how their closet space is used as the seasons change, doing so will not only give you the peace of mind that comes with having an uncrowded closet, but it might also be beneficial for the wearable life of your garments in the long run. With that said then, let's jump right in today and discuss the techniques for storing your clothing effectively. First, as long as you're already going through your closet, now would be a good time to get rid of garments that you really aren't wearing anymore. Heavily worn or damaged items should be discarded, items needing minor repairs should be fixed up, and things that are in good shape but you don't really see yourself wearing anymore should be donated. By the way, if you're looking for how to make some of these minor clothing repairs, you can check out our recent video on how to sew on a button here. As a very general rule of thumb, if you find that an item has stayed on its hanger for more than a year unworn, it's probably a good sign that you can get rid of it. Some people are more strict with this and say that you should part with things if you haven't worn them in two months, but you can decide what timetable is right for you. Additionally, this may be a good time to clean the closet itself as well. Vacuum the floor, wipe down the shelves, and so on. Speaking of cleaning, before they're stored, all of your winter wardrobe items should be thoroughly cleaned. After all, you don't want dirt, dust, and other debris settling into your garments while they're in storage for multiple months. Additionally, insects like moths and silverfish are naturally attracted to lingering scents on clothing, even scents that are imperceptible to humans. To begin our specific cleaning instructions then, footwear should first be wiped down with a damp cloth, then a clean, dry cloth, and then finally given a good pass with a shoe brush. Polishing with saddle soap or leather conditioner could also be a good idea at this time, and for suede, you'll want to use cleaning tools that are specifically designed for that material. Make sure to wipe down the interiors of your footwear if you're able as well. Also, giving footwear a day to sit and deodorize with something like a sachet full of baking soda for at least a day before storing can also be beneficial. And while we here at the Gentleman's Gazette advocate for keeping your footwear in tip-top shape on a day-to-day -day basis with high-quality shoe trees, natural cedar models may actually wick out too much of footwear's natural oils if they're left in for months at a time. With that said, the best way to keep your footwear in shape while storing it for months is to fill it with acid-free tissue paper scrunched up tightly. Hats should also be wiped down and brushed, but with a softer garment brush. A shoe brush would be too abrasive for that kind of material. Most other items should be laundered as normal, which means either hand washing or machine washing in mesh garment bags and then left to dry on a drying rack. If you'd like more information on machine washing and hand washing different types of garments, you can check out our video on washing and maintaining wool sweaters here. You can prevent insect damage to your clothes by using a natural repellent like lavender. Although something like mothballs may seem like the easy solution, they're actually bad for storage with your garments over time. Not only do mothballs carry an unpleasant odor, but the compounds that are used to make them aren't exactly healthy. After all, think of it this way. If moths naturally know to keep away from them, then humans probably should too. Cedar repels moths well, but as we mentioned before, leaving clothing in direct contact with cedar for months at a time can dry it out or wick out some of the natural oils. Also, if you want to use something like a cedar chest, the gaps in the construction of those types of containers will sometimes still let insects in but we'll get to what containers we think are best in a moment. So after you've washed them, what's the best way to store your garments then? 
You can start by placing heavier items like denim, other trousers, and coats at the bottom of a breathable cotton storage container. You can find both soft-bodied models and ones with reinforcement at the sides, whichever you would prefer. Medium weight items like sweaters come next in the storage container, and then lightweight items like shirts can be placed on top. Delicate items like sweaters, ties, or scarves made from materials like cashmere can also be wrapped in acid-free tissue paper for an extra layer of protection. Also, you can place your cashmere items in a plastic bag and put them in the freezer for a day or two before storing them, just to make sure that the extreme cold kills any moths or larvae that might be present. Why not just use plastic storage containers for the long term, then? Simply stated, when any garment is left in a plastic bin or garment bag and exposed to light, yellowing of the garment can occur. Further, the lack of air circulation inside most plastic containers can lead to moisture accumulation or even mold if the containers are stored improperly. It's important that items not to be worn for a long period of time be neatly folded instead of left on the hanger. This is especially true for sweaters. Left to hang, garments made from wool, cashmere, acrylic, or polyester will become misshapen over time as gravity pulls them in different directions across the hanger. Cotton garments are more resilient than these other types, but still, folding is always preferable to hanging for long-term storage. If you do have a genuine fur coat, you can consider keeping it hung up, but at the same time, you might want to consider getting it professionally stored. Real fur needs to be kept in climate-controlled spaces at temperatures of around 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius and roughly 50% humidity to be kept in good condition over the long term. If you are leaving anything hung up, opt for a shaped or padded hanger over a standard plastic hanger. And it goes without saying, no wire hangers ever. Lighter weight trousers, as well as sweaters and shirts, can also be rolled instead of folded. This way you can stack them horizontally instead of vertically, which may mean more maximization of space in your storage containers. Before storing coats, remember also to remove any items from the pockets, meaning both the interior and exterior pockets. You can store footwear on the floor or a shelf of your closet in the open air, but to be even more safe, putting it back into its original box or another cotton storage container would be a better idea. Additionally, things like hanging boot racks are also available. Your cotton containers and any other loose garments that you may have should be stored in an environment that is dark, dry, clean, and cool. What we mean by cool here is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius. Bright environments will cause your clothing to fade, hot or damp environments are just going to lead to mildew, and of course a dusty environment will just get your recently cleaned clothes dirty again. Don't try to be overly efficient with your storage containers and overfill them either. Remember that space and breathability are key to making sure that your garments have proper air circulation so that you don't get moisture buildup or excess wrinkling. If you need to buy a few more cotton storage containers to make sure that everything is stored properly, it's an investment that will give you a great return in the long run. If you do need to be especially mindful of maximizing your storage space, keep in mind that some garments can be stored inside of others. For example, you could take gloves and nest them inside of boots. Vacuum sealable storage bags can also come in handy, but keep in mind that the wrinkles created from this process will be much harder to get out when you excavate your garments again in the fall. And when it does come time to get your garments out of storage again, steaming them with a garment steamer should be able to get out any wrinkling or scents that have accumulated in the passing months. If you'd like to find out how to get rid of any really persistent scents in clothing, you can check out our recent video on that subject here. And here's one final tip for today. Do remember to keep a couple of transitional pieces out of storage. 
Unless you've happened to wait until the middle of summer to put away all of your winter clothing, having a few medium weight pieces out of storage that you can wear for colder spring days is a good idea. Especially if you live in a part of the globe where spring can mean warmer days and cooler nights, for example here in Minnesota where Gentleman's Gazette headquarters is located, having a few of these transitional pieces will be smart over time. With these tips at your disposal then, you should head into spring with a closet that's neat and tidy, and garments that are safely and tidily packed away until things get chilly again. We'd like to know, which of the tips we outlined today did you find most surprising or innovative? Let us know in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell icon so videos like these can come straight to your inbox. In today's video, I'm wearing something that might be worn around the house while storing away my winter garments, or something that could come in handy as a transitional outfit in the spring. I'm wearing a cashmere sweater in a sort of plum color that's complemented with the shirt I'm wearing. It's a lilac twill shirt in a puppy tooth pattern from Charles Tirrett, and even though it has French cuffs, I'm wearing them configured in a barrel style today so that they fit more easily under the sleeves of my sweater. As such, my cufflinks aren't really anything special, just some understated black ones. Both my trousers and my socks are plain black, and the outfit is capped off by my pair of black cap-toe derby shoes. Also, I happen to be wearing a vintage black tie to keep my trousers up, but it's not really meant to be seen. I'm wearing it in place of a belt because it's less visible and bulky under my sweater. <laughs> Thank you.